On First Down, you'll hear interviews with some of the top minds in sports, as well as actionable tips and strategies you can implement into your daily life to become a more effective coach. My name is Justin Tichinell, former college football player turned entrepreneur. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now, let's jump into the content. Today, I'm here with Coach Sam Miller. Thanks for coming on, Coach. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. So, Coach Miller, he is the running backs coach at Johns Hopkins University. They're the 2023 Centennial Conference champs. So, to kick things off, Coach, can you just share with the audience a little bit about your background and how you got involved in your current role? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, starting out, I uh, started coaching at Defiance College. Um, I was actually there in the 2021 season. Um, so, like, I, I, I GA'd there. Uh, which um, it was, it was a, it was a crazy experience. Um, so, you know, I get there in August and, you know, we're starting through camp through about like two weeks into camp. And then there was a situation and, you know, our, our head coach ended up getting, getting fired there. And uh, they made um, Ernest Wilson, our, our interim head coach, um, which personally, like for me, like helped my growth a lot, just like learning from him. So, you know, we go through the season, which it was it was a it was kind of an up and down season. You know, we didn't win a lot of games. Um, we ended up our, our, I think our one win that season was we actually ended up beating like the top team in the conference at that time, which which was pretty nice. And uh, but, you know, that was kind of where I learned a lot about myself just as a coach. And um, like I said, it was really cool, you know, learning from Coach Wilson, kind of just, you know, taking me under his wing and kind of just showing me a lot of things. I, I remember at one point he was like, Hey, you know, kind of just seeing the potential in me. So like, Hey, this, these are the things that you need to do to, you know, eventually like go on to be a coordinator and, you know, eventually be a head coach, um, you know, later in your career. So I, I'm just always kind of grateful of that experience just because like, you know, a lot of places where you GA, they sometimes they kind of just put you in a closet and kind of just say like, Hey dude, you know, this, 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 and that, and kind of just, forget about you. Whereas, you know, I, I had a very interactive role. I had my own position room. Um, you know, I was pretty much in charge of my own room just because like I said, he kind of, he had the faith in me and, uh, you know, kind of just gave me the tools that I needed to be successful. And, and on top of that, you know, we had a, a smaller staff just because like we couldn't hire everybody that we wanted to at the time, especially, you know, with the coach, head coach getting fired. So it was like, we were like in the process of bringing more people on and then once the head coach, you know, got fired, it was more so like, well, you know, they initially told Coach Wilson, like, hey, you know, don't hire anybody else right now. I'll wait till the off season. And uh, so, you know, that season we, you know, there was like six of us. So it's kind of hard. You got to do a little bit of everything. So, you know, um, you know, I have, you know, I have my own recruiting area and, you know, you had to work out, help out with uh, like equipment and stuff like that. It was like everybody was kind of, all hands on deck. Um, so it was good for me to kind of experience things that, you know, like I said, most GAs wouldn't, wouldn't experience just because, you know, most staffs don't need you to do it. They need you to do this, yeah. this and that. So like, I'm, a, I'm essentially, you know, a regular full-time coach, just, you know, I'm just going to school while I'm doing it. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it was, it was a great experience for me and it kind of helped really build the framework of you know what I believe as a coach and kind of just like my overall philosophy. Yeah, it's really cool. And before we started recording here today, we talked about you being a player at Southern Virginia University. So can you talk about how that, in addition to obviously you being a GA, has helped form your coaching philosophies as a position coach now this past season? Yeah, absolutely. So I, uh, like I said, I'm really grateful for my time at Southern Virginia. Definitely grateful for my time at like Brevard College too. Um, I think like more so the chunk of, of like my playing time was at, you know, Brevard College where, you know, that was kind of a time where I, I had to kind of grow up and it just kind of helped because, you know, then they ran a triple option then. So, like, you learn, like, really just kind of, like, base football principles, whereas, like, not a lot of people run a triple option now, but triple option always helps just, like, essentially just learning football and just, like, how things make sense and, and where to be and um, just like overall schematics. So, you know, just kind of going from there, which, you know, I get to Southern Virginia, they run the triple option too. Um, and then 
you know, once kind of Coach DePay moved on, uh, they kind of went away from it a little bit, but kind of still the same, uh, it's kind of the same, you know, framework. And uh, I was fortunate, like I had a good running back coach when I was at Brevard and I had a good running back coach when I was at Southern Virginia. Um, and like I said, I was fortunate for my time at Brevard and Southern Virginia. And it's kind of unfortunate, like, like my time at Southern Virginia kind of got cut short just because, you know, Brevard, you know, you're kind of used to, you know, being on scholarship, not having to pay for like food and stuff like that, where, you know, Southern Virginia, it's like, you know, you get into it and you're like, man, I'm, you're like trying to work a full-time job and play at the same time. And it's like, it's like, it's almost, it, it was hard. Like it was kind of hard to do. And it got to a point where, you know, coach Mulatalo, um, he said, Hey man, you know, go take care of what you need to take care of. Like football will, will be here for you. And, uh, you know, go take care of everything like financially and everything first and then you know come back to this and uh you know that helped me out like and eventually it got to a point where you know I didn't fully get back into football which was fine you know I had my time and I played and it was it was great um but like I said I, I learned a lot just on the field and off the field from a position coach uh Michael Fry um who he he's there now so uh, and it was cool to kind of see him and how he handled everything coming in like being a young running back coach because I was essentially in the same position as him as being just thrown in the fire. Um, like I said, some places they kind of take you step by step and just kind of lock in the room and forget about you. And some places, like I said, they throw you right to the fire. Like, Hey, this is your position room. This is the playbook, figure it out. And kind of just seeing how he progressed through that, like, you know, starting out, like, cause I was his first year and just like seeing what he's progressing to now and always be able, being able to lean on to him for advice. I will call him all the time at Defiance, like, hey, you know, what do I do about this? Or, you know, what do you think about this here? Or, you know, and he always like supported me. And it was kind of nice to have him up at the, you know, our, our playoff game against Randolph Megan. He got to come up and watch. So it was always good to, you know, see him and have his support. But kind of just building that relationship with him at Southern Virginia really helped me in my career later on. Very cool. And just going back to, we alluded to this a little bit, but can you talk more about like your coaching philosophies as a running back coach specifically? Yeah. Right. So, you no, know, just as far as my philosophy, I like to give guys the freedom to, to be themselves. Um, not every running back is the same. You know, you got guys who are shifty. You got guys who are more downhill runners, a little bit more powerful. You got guys who are a mix of both. And uh, I, I like guys to be able to, you know, be themselves and, and you know, make really fast decisions on the field. Um, you know, you'll always have, you know, your aiming points and your reads and kind of just like the, the overall understanding of the defense. But, you know, running backs have to be able to find a good mix of, you know, my aiming points and my read and then just being an athlete. Um, yeah. Yeah which it's like, you know, like I said, I, I like, you know, athletic guys. I like guys, you know, speedy guys, faster guys, you know, and guys, you know, get downhill. Um, but there comes like a, like, I guess, like Coach Kamara here at Hopkins kind of gave a good analogy as far as like a, like an ax pick and just hitting the rock, hitting the rock until the rock finally breaks. And I think that's just kind of how it is when, you know, you go through, it, it may be monotonous, you know, having, you know, continue to have square shoulders, pressing the line of scrimmage and kind of just staying on your aiming point, reading your read keys. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you keep hitting on the rock, hitting on the rock and eventually something's going to break. So just kind of having those guys who understand the integrity of the play and the the blocking schemes and what we're trying to do as the offense. That's where like my philosophy kind of, you know, takes me in my position group. Um, which, like I said, I've been fortunate to have some some really good running backs, and they all kind of just embody, like, my overall philosophy. Like, hey, we want to be, you know, athletes, but at the same time, you know, we want to be able to kind of just continue to press on it, you know, and kind of do what we want to do and, like, kind of understand the integrity of the offense. Yeah, and going back to what you were saying about just being persistent and just, you know, keep on hitting the rock, like yep. – that's that's why I love football is that it's it's a perfect life teacher and you know the the lessons that your guys are going to learn on the field they they can be applied to anything like yeah. for me 
being a former player and, and, you know, being about two years into my career now, you know, it's something that I apply to my business and, you know, something that I think any, any college athlete can really learn from. And I'm, I'm sure you can attest to that too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, which is nice because like at, at the same time, you know, these guys are student athletes, so they're not, and especially on the division three level, which you got some guys who may go on to the next level and play. Um, but a lot of these guys are going to be going into their career field after they're done. So kind of taking these lessons and learning and just kind of applying them to your career fit, career field is really going to help these guys out. And uh, like, for, for example, like, like my star running back Spencer, like he's studying to be a neurosurgeon. Like he has to go through, yeah, he has to go through, you know, uh, like pre-med, he's like doing pre-med now. So like he has to go into doctoral school and it's going to be hard at times. And, you know, there's going to be situations where he just has to kind of just, you know, trust the integrity of, you know, what's trying to be accomplished and keep pounding on the rock, keep pounding on the rock and keep striking the rock. And it's just, you know, those lessons that he learns here, he's going to be able to take with him forever and just, you know, all those guys. I mean, there's still stuff that I, I learned now that, yeah, obviously, like I apply it now, like to my job, like being a coach. But it's things that I can use, you know, if I was a, in, in the business field, working with marketing, which like here at Hopkins, like we have a lot of guys who are working in like the business field, too. So which, you know, sales, sales is tough. You know, sales is tough. You're going to hear no a lot. And it's mm -hmm. just like, hey, you just got to keep, you know, being persistent, understand the integrity of what you're trying to do and keep pushing forward. And uh, like that, that overall analogy, that's that's one of those things where it's like you hear it and, you know, you keep putting in your pocket and, you know, keep it forever. So, you know, it's definitely important, you know, the life lessons that you learn playing football. It's uh, like, so you're really carrying it with you. Yeah. And it's funny you, you mentioned just like what, what your guys were studying. So when I was getting recruited to play football, like one of my top schools, at least coming out of high school was actually Hopkins. Okay. I didn't get in, but I just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just remember, you know, hearing like the, hearing about the careers that some of those guys have and, yeah. you know, post-graduation, it's, it's really impressive. And, you know, I always make the analogy that Hopkins is kind of like, like a Ivy league education in division three football. So yeah. you're going to get, you're going to get some of those really great athletes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a good combination of, of just athletics and just absolutely like dominance on the football field. Yeah. Um, which like it's a it's a great environment, and um, I, I think that any kid who you know who wants to get like the best education possible, while still being able to play in like high level football games, it like this is absolutely the place you know to be. Um, like I said, I, and I'm fortunate, you know, Coach you know Horvatis and Coach Kamara you know br brought me on for this because it's just been a special experience for me, and I just you kind of just feel like like you're in an, an exclusive club. And, uh, like, even as a coach, just kind of being a part of it. So I know, like, you can only imagine how like, the players feel. Like, because, you're like I said, you're an elite company. You're one of the best football players in the country at what you do. And academically, like, you're also one of the best students in the country. So, you yeah. know, it, it's – and on the flip side of that, it, it's hard work. And I, I really commend a lot, everybody on our team just because, you know, the classes here are hard. You know, and they can be really rigorous. But at the same time – being able to get up at, you know, 5.30 in the morning to go out and have practice, you know, regardless of the temperature, and then go on and take one of the hardest classes that, you know, any kid in the country is taking, you know, it, it really just kind of attests to the hard work that all the all of our guys put in. And, you know, I, I'm really proud of, you know, the whole team for that, just because it, it's just a standard here that's just continued to go on. And um, it, it's made for some really great alumni um, yeah. that came from Hopkins, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there goes your marketing side. <laughs> talking, <Yeah>. about, <laughs> talking about the Hopkins you know, alumni bit. group. So that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Any, you know, being a young coach yourself and being a few years into the profession, any advice you would give other guys like around our age that are just getting started off? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, a, a few things always, you know, be willing to learn, you know, always be willing to learn and, that's just the one thing. Sometimes it's like I, I've known guys who have, you know, they may have played quarterback or they just naturally know football. 
which is great. Like that, those are things that you're going to be able to take with you. And you'll always have that knowledge with you because it's, it's what you've already learned. But at times there comes great value in kind of just, just saying it how it is just like shutting up and listening to, to somebody because, you know, nine times out of 10, you know, you want to get your ideas across. You want to get how you feel across. You want to be able to game plan. You want to have your voice in the room when you're game planning. Sometimes you just need to listen. And I think a lot of guys kind of get in their own way, just not being willing willing to listen to other people. And um, I think that's something that really helped me. Like I said, just, you know, being with Coach Wilson, just, you know, he's he's been coaching for a while. He was, you know, offensive coordinator at, at Jackson State. Uh, he's had some really high-powered offenses. Um and so it's like, who who am I to think that, you know, like I said, I was taught really well by Coach Fry, but who am I to kind of sit here and, and think like I, I would know even a fraction of what Coach Wilson knows. So it's like, listen to what he has to say, listen to what anybody who's been in any coaching field has to say. And even on top of that, you know, there's kind of just this, I feel like there's a divide between like high school coaches and college coaches where it's as if, you know, college coaches may look down on high school coaches, but I think a lot of the innovation comes from high school coaches. Like if you look at a lot of the like more creative coaches in college football now, like a lot of those guys have had stints in high school just because you get a lot more time to just be creative. So just being able to listen and just being able to, you know, do whatever is necessary to, you know, be successful is kind of just, you know, my, my best advice. Um, and I think I think one more thing is just kind of put yourself in situations that, you know, will allow you to display your skills. You know, just looking for a GA, you know, I had situations where I could have went to schools who were really good, um, and, you know, were, you know, contending teams and things like that. But, you know, defiance wasn't that that good at the time. And, you know, just kind of going in a situation like, all right, well, if I go here. I may be able to have a bigger impact here than I would somewhere else. So just kind of understanding like not every position is going to be a good position for you. You kind of just have to go where, you know, your best fit is and where you think that you'll be able to learn the most. So Definitely. Well, thanks again, coach, for the advice. Great talking Absolutely. with you today. Absolutely. And, you know, best of luck on the recruiting trail. Yeah, it'll be nice. You know, we, we got some guys. So, like, we don't actually go out on the road or anything like that. So, you know, which which is nice. But, uh, you know, we, you know, we're kind of just fi finishing up our class right now. Got, got some good guys coming in that we're excited about next year. So, it'll be able to – it'll be nice to kind of see, you know, how, how the guys coming in mesh with the new guys um, and the guys that are already here. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we can uh, – you know, repeat what we did this year and uh, go a little bit further in the playoffs, man. It was it was kind of nice to see Cortland win uh, Friday. Just because I think it kind of it's nice when the field is a little bit like we don't know who can win, and you know yeah. I think that's I think that's really football at its at its, at its purest form. You mm -hmm. know, there's going to be good teams, but when everybody's kind of good and on a certain level, it, it just kind of makes for the the playoffs to be so much more exciting. And uh, it was it was fun to experience that this year. So, but uh, but I appreciate you having me on. Yes, sir. Likewise. Thank you.